Today we are going to discuss about the key features of object-oriented programming. See, there are a lot of key features as far as object-oriented programming paradigm is concerned. But there are three main features. First one is data hiding. Second one is encapsulation. And third one is abstraction. Now see, before we go into the details of these features, we should be well versed with the concept of objects and classes in object-oriented programming. I will be giving a very brief overview of classes and objects. See, classes and objects, these are the two entities which happen to be the main features of any object-oriented programming language. These are the main entities rather, I should say. These are the main entities. Now see, what is a class? A class is just a skeleton or we can say a performer for many objects. Objects are physical entities. I will give you an example. For example, suppose you happen to be the student of a particular college and you have been put into a class. There is a class called BTEC, BTEC Semester 4. BTEC Semester 4 is the name of the class. All of you happen to be the objects of this class BTEC Semester 4. Now see, in BTEC semester 4, the class, there will be some data, like there will be your roll number, there will be your university registration number, there will be your name, your father's name, your cell number, your date of birth. Now these are the things that I am talking about, these are the attributes, or we say the properties. In object-oriented paradigm, the technical word is member data or instance variables. See. Now what will uh, happen is, we will be having these uh, member data in the class. Apart from this, in the class we will be having the various functions which will be applicable on the objects of this class. Class is BTEC semester 4. Now on this class we will be having a function that will be responsible for entering the details of the new student who is getting admission into the college. And we will be having a function that will be printing the result, that will be printing the result report of the students and there will be another function if a so suppose if a student leaves the college then the record deletion will take place for that particular student from the database so we will be having a particular function devoted to deletion of the record so this way we can have many functions which will be performing particular logically isolated tasks right now see as far as classes and objects are concerned first we will see uh, Again, I will repeat, objects are physical entities. All of you are objects of BTEC semester 4 class. Now, as I have explained, you will be having some data, like your roll number, decision number, etc. And functions associated with this class. And name of the class is BTEC semester 4. And you people will be the objects student 1, student 2, student 3, student 4. Now they will be the objects of this class. Right? So all the data and functions which are being presented in the class they will be applied upon these students. So always these students that is these objects student 1, student 2, student 3, student 4 etc. Again I will say objects are physical entities of a class. Right? So again, classes are just a skeleton performer. A class encapsulates data and functions. And objects are the physical entities upon which the data and functions of these classes are implemented. They are applied upon the objects. Now we come to this point. What is data hiding? Now see, uh, data hiding is the feature by which we prefer to keep the data, member data of a class strictly private to that class. That means in data hiding, like I was giving you an example here, roll number, edition number, name, father's name, date of birth, etc. We will be having many classes in our software. But what we will be doing is, we will be making this data private to this class. That is, whosoever wants to access this data, he will have to access the class first. The control will go into the 
function of this class, some function of this class, only then we will be able to access the data. So data hiding means keeping the data private to the class for which it has been declared. This is data hiding. A uh, very key feature of uh, object printed programming. Now we come to the encapsulation part. As far as encapsulation is concerned, we have already discussed this with the help of VTX Master Core class. What I, am, I want to say is encapsulation is the feature by which we people combine data and functions together in a unit. And what is that unit? A class. So, uh, in a class, what we people do is we encapsulate data and functions. This is encapsulation. Next point is abstraction. Now, what is abstraction? Basically, abstraction means making use of something without having to go into the details. When we use something without going into the details, we, uh, similar, so, so suppose I will give you an example. Suppose you people drive a car. You people are driving a car for many years, but it is very seldom that you people uh, you people think about the engineering uh, particular engineering features that have been put into that modern car. What are the engineering features? How the engine works? How the clutch system works? How the gear system works? You uh, you are not bothered about that. You simply know how to drive the car, and you will be driving the car without going into details. This is somewhat which is called abstraction. Now see, as far as object-oriented programming is concerned, how we can uh, explain abstraction? Now see, in object-oriented programming, there are two types of uh, 